Control, we all want it and seek it in some manner. We humans are known for our independent thinking and we strive to be different from one another. And especially among the billions of humans, the most important thing we need in determining our independence is control. For without it, we'd be unable to self-determinate what makes us unique and 2018's upgrade defines our need for control perfectly as it stars characters that constantly strive to achieve an outcome that benefits them yet can oftentimes merely lead to only the illusion of control. But before I talk about that, I need to speak on the incredible feats that were accomplished in this film with a budget of just three million dollars. Made in 2018 and directed by Leigh Whannell and produced by Jason Blum and his production company Blumhouse Productions, Blumhouse is mainly known for producing horror films such as the Paranormal Activity and Insidious franchises, as well as works such as Get Out and Split. Thus, the studio's hand in the film is seen through the use of unique camera angles during intense fight scenes, its symbolic and atmospheric dark lighting, extremely up-close and uncomfortable audio, and unique character acting. All of these are a necessity in creating an otter type of film within the cyberpunk genre, as all of these things support the argument of control perfectly. The fight sequences along with the unique use of tilting the camera following Great Trace's stem controlled body make the movements feel unnatural and honestly make the user feel nauseous. Obviously done on purpose of course as the actions reflect the superhuman and unnatural movements the main character Grey commits. And the use of the film's lighting allows the film to look like it's something out of Blade Runner 2049. And that movie's got a way bigger budget than Upgrade. But the lighting is also not just there to make it look higher quality. Oftentimes the lighting is used to signify malicious intent with shapes to further accompany this malevolence. Or it can even add to the overall atmosphere of the scene which is taking place, such as allowing more misty and beige use of colors and lighting to signify a more rundown lower class neighborhood. And had it been blue instead of the colors they did use, then the film would look much more cheaper and dull. But instead, they opted for the best experience and put effort into every scene's lighting for maximum atmospherical and symbolic effect. Furthermore, the use of the artificial intelligence named Stem constantly be this immense overpowering voice in Grey's head makes you feel not only uncomfortable, but not in full control and unsure of its motives with Grey's body. And the acting, especially Tom Hardy look-alike Logan Marshall Green, pulls off the confused, lost, and unsure character of Grey Trace, constantly managing to pull off a moment of self-realization with a lip quiver and confused puppy dog-like eyes, making him appear like a child who did something wrong but doesn't know what else to do other than quiver in fear and confusion. All of this is made for a mere three million dollars and helps complement the film's most important aspect. Upgrade's main thematic message is brilliant, as it's done through an overarching red herring which turns the film from a thriller action mystery into a psychological horror likely due to Blumhouse's participation in the project. And the overarching red herring revenge plot makes the subject of Control feel like it was never there to be had for the main character to begin with. And yes, Control is the most prevalent theme throughout this film, as every supporting character and even an animate object is haunted by Control. Take the self-driving car we see at the beginning of the film and never see again. It's just a car, yes, but its use in the overall story is that it lost Control, thus leading to the events that happen later on in the film, because obviously one of the film's other messages is that you can't depend on self-determining technology. Speaking of technology, STEM is the definition and embodiment of control. He, or more like it, is everything Grey Trace wants to be and do, but just can't get himself to do it. Thus, his inability to do immoral acts makes him the film's heart and soul and is where everything originates from. He is a very human, very broken and lost character. He is the protagonist of the story, but not the hero. As after losing his wife to a group of killers and being left a quadriplegic, falling into depression and then attempting suicide, he's just somebody who, after then gaining the ability to try and seek revenge with his new companion and ability to walk, realizes that his entire revenge plot has been for nothing. In fact, Grey and Stem's relationship is incredibly effective in representing a constant power struggle between the two parties, as on one hand you have Grey, who is seen to never become comfortable with killing. Now have full control again, Grey. <coughs> Thank you, Grey. I'm not proud of that. 
Okay, enough, Stem. Stem, enough! God damn it! You, you've nearly killed her! Furthermore, he also tries to sometimes throw in a comedic one-liner. Did you see that? Hmm? You thought I was an invalid, but you didn't know that I'm a fucking ninja. <laughs> in order to ease in the mood, not for the sake of the audience, but rather for himself, as he has nobody left in his life whom he believes can comfort him. Nor does he become edgy all of a sudden and begin to don black clothing and act like a badass at all times because of this newfound artificial power. I mean, he tried it, but that didn't go so well, and thus we saw even more of that self-comforting side. Because Grey is a person who knows the clear distinction between being somebody you are not and being somebody you are. And now on the other hand, you have STEM, which is an artificial intelligence and is so infatuated with becoming human, or at the very least controlling its own actions as a human, that it would stop at nothing to get its plan to come to fruition, even if it means breaking its host's mind. And so, once the climax reaches its conclusion, we are given a very bittersweet ending that has to do with these two characters and their relationship with each other. I struggle to even call it a bittersweet ending due to the clear morally evil things committed by the end of it. I believe that when Grey is seen trying to gain control of himself before killing an innocent person by putting a gun to his neck and saying, You are not in control! I am! And then right after, showing a sequence of him in his own mind, imagining all the film events which transpired post-car crash to never have happened, is proof of us as viewers realizing that Grey isn't in control, and that he lost. In fact, he actually lost from the start. Grey was merely a pawn who struggled to come to gripes with the actions he committed in order to get his revenge, and also struggled with the loss of the people in his life, and even his own ability to do what he wanted with his body, both pre and post stem. He gained nothing in the real world, and so he decided to retreat into a fantasy world, a figment of his imagination. You can consider him having the ability to manifest his fantasy world as an act of control, but the reason it even happened was that he lost control in the real world, and who's to say that your own figment of the so-called control is really even control? As Grey's mind broke down and him falling into his own world is a last resort. It's denial, it's artificial dominance, it's false authority, it's the illusion of control. Before I end this video, I'd like to touch on how this film used the topic of transhumanism and its importance to humans' abilities to self-choose. Stem, in particular, is a very interesting character on this subject, as its basic uses are that you are able to not only move around normally when having taken catastrophic damage to your spine, but also allows you to move in ways most humans cannot without at first incredibly practicing to do these feats. And thus, after watching the film, you've likely thought to yourself, was it Grey that was even committing these horrifying acts, or was it really Stem? While technically, Grey did in fact give permission in allowing Stem to commit these acts, Stem itself went further beyond what was expected it was going to when it was in control. This was obviously represented through Grey constantly disagreeing and scolding Stem once given back control of his own body. The ending's use of Grey escaping into his mind and then letting Stem take over was actually Grey's choice and has no counter-argument in the matter, as after all, he was content with staying in his mind and then permitting Stem to kill a police officer as well as leave with his his body. Technically, it was no longer him committing these acts of murder, as he knew he could no longer go on this way without likely committing suicide or having to go to jail if he allowed the officer to live. As yes, the officer may let him off the hook, the justice system would likely not. As prior to these events, near the beginning of the film after he lost his wife and the ability to move around, we see just how awful the system is in being able to catch his wife's killers. So what you're saying is you have all these things flying above our heads that can read the ID chips in our fillings, but they don't actually do anything. No, I, I mean, yes, they work, but it's not that simple. Criminals can find ways around them. If they can find the right people, criminals can get a firewall built around them that prevents our drones from identifying their faces. Thus, it's likely quite easy to manipulate the system, as the film states just how simple technology can bend to the user's will, making Grey vulnerable for the taking and showing his inability to dominate in a field he knows nothing or wants nothing to do with. But what if it were me, or you the viewer who was in Grey's place? 
Would you have kept permitting an unknown deity to commit the acts you otherwise could not? Would you try and become accustomed to something you are not comfortable in doing? If so, then that likely means you've given away your jurisdiction to another power. You've given away your ability to control. It's in turn, giving away your humanity. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this unique argument and topic I brought up in a film I'm quite fond of, as Upgrade speaks on subjects that are often not really covered much in the cyberpunk genre, and I'm also really fond of the optimism bias Grey Trace is given at the beginning of the film, only to then have all that be shattered by the end of it. I think Upgrade sits as being underrated and underanalyzed, as it's quite obvious that you can actually go pretty deep into the characters' mindsets and their beliefs, and that's why I just wanted to give my two thoughts on it. If you'd like to discuss the topic of this video or another topic that may be relevant to the film, then please leave it in the comments below. Or if you just want to say hi and speak your mind, then please do so as well. I also wanted to notify you that I will be posting another anime-related video for the next upload, as I'd like to stay consistent with this channel being both for film as well as anime. Anyways, that is all for this video. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and goodbye.